Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to take some notes over a special right triangles. You should have seen these in geometry and algebra 2, and they're your 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 triangles. Very important on the SAT and ACT test as well. So we're going to make sure that we remember these ratios. I'm going to do a couple examples with you. We're going to start with the 45, 45, 90 triangle and go through a couple examples of how to deal with that. Okay, so we're going to look at a 45, 45, 90 triangle, this little box, of course, means that's an, a right angle. And if this acute angle is 45, there is only 45 degrees left for this other angle. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And if YZ has a length of 1, find the lengths of the other two sides. Well, since YZ is across from a 45 degree angle, XY is also across from a 45 degree angle. And since these two angles are equal in this triangle, the lengths opposite them must also be equal. And you can either do the Pythagorean theorem, or you can remember that the hypotenuse will be one of these side lengths times the square root of two. So there are the other two sides. And this is your basic 45, 45, 90 triangle. And I'm gonna use this a lot in my examples. Let's go through B and C. If YZ had a length of five, what would the lengths of YX and XZ be? Well, if YZ, which is one of the acute angles in this isosceles triangle, isosceles meaning two equal sides and two equal angles. So if YZ had a length, I'm sorry, YX had a, sorry, YZ had a length of five, then YX must also be the same thing. So this is Y and X and Z. So YX would also have a length of five and the length of XZ, the hypotenuse, would be one of those legs times the square root of two. So the length of YX would be five and the length of XZ would be five square roots of two. Okay, now let's do a different example. If XZ had a length of three, then what would the length of XY be? And this is a little trickier, so we're gonna use similar triangles here. So we're gonna set this up. X, Y, Z. All right, if XZ has a length of three, what is the length of XY? And so I'm gonna put an, I don't know, I'll put an M here because I'm already using an X. I don't wanna put an X there. And I'm gonna use similar triangles. The reason we can use similar triangles is because these two triangles have angle, 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 and we can use similar triangles in that instance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that this M, what I'm looking for, over the corresponding side in my base 45, 45, 90, M over one, has to equal three over the corresponding side in the base 45, 90, 45, 45, 90 is the square root of two. And so this is what M equals. Multiply both sides by one, and you get three, square, three over the square root of two. Now you can also rationalize this. I do not care if you do this or not, but you can get rid of a square root in the bottom if you feel like it by multiplying the top and bottom by that convenient form of one, and you would get three square roots of two over two. Either one of these answers is fine with your math teacher. Uh, you probably have rationalized in geometry. It's not necessary in pre-calculus or calculus. So the reason we rationalized went away a long time ago with the advent of this little thing called a calculator because we don't have to do this division by hand. If you wanna know more about that, ask me about it. Anyway, okay, so let's do another one. What if XZ had a length of two square roots of five? Find the length of YZ. Well, again, I'm going to set up similar triangles. So if XZ is two square roots of five, we wanna find YZ, so I'll put an M here. And again, I'm still using this base 45, 45, 90 triangle here. So let's set up our ratio. M over one equals two square roots of five over the square root of two. And again, with me, that is a that answer is perfectly fine. If you wanted to go through and rationalize this, you could multiply the top and bottom by the square root of two, and you would get two square roots of 10 over two, which is just the square root of 10. This answer 
and this answer right here have the exact same decimal value. Go ahead and type them in a calculator and see if they don't, but they do, and I will accept either one. Let's do another example. What if yx had a length of the square root of 3 over 7, find the lengths of yz and xz? X, Y, Z. Okay, so Y, X has a length of square root of 3 over 7. Keep in mind, this is still our 45, 45, 90 triangles. These two are equal. Well, Y, Z is going to be pretty easy because it also has to be the square root of 3 over 7 because, again, these are the same angle, so they, the, angle, the sides across those angles have to be the same. But we do want to find the measure of xz. So I'll set up m, which is right here, divided by the corresponding side on our base 45, 45, 90 with square root of 2 on the hypotenuse equals the square root of 3 over 7 over 1. And if you cross multiply here, you'll get that m equals the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6. They both have square roots, so you can multiply what's underneath the square root together, so that's the square root of 6 over 7. So what I did is I cross multiplied square root of 2 times all that, and that is side length um, xz. Alright, let's go forward and let's do a 30-60-90 triangle examples. And our base 30-60-90, if we have 60 degrees here at angle R, then angle T here is 30 degrees, and there's our 90 degrees. We're going to put a 1 across from the 30 degree angle, we're going to put a 2 on the hypotenuse and a square root of 3 across from the 60 degree angle. That's your basic 30-60-90 ratio. So if SR had a length of 7, then what would the length of RT and ST be? Well, this is pretty easy. If you know the side across from the 30 degree angle, you just double that or times 2 to get the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 14. And then you times by the square root of 3 to get the side across from the 60 degree angle. So RT is 14 and ST is 7 square root of 3. This next example though, we're probably going to use similar triangles because if you don't know the side across from the 30 degree angle, it gets a little more difficult. So let's draw this one. <laughs> All right, if ST has a length of 5, so 5 goes here, and this is our 60 degree angle, and this is our 30 degree angle, find the lengths of SR and RT. Well, here I'm going to use similar triangles. I'm going to put an X and a Y here because we're, there aren't any of my angles. And I'm going to set up similar triangles. So I'm going to say X over 1, because that's what it corresponds to, equals 5 over the square root of 3. And that is your answer for x. And if you rationalize this, you would get 5 square roots of 3 over 3. Either one of these two answers is fine with me. And then to find y, I'll, I'll set up another ratio. So I'm going to get y. Well, do I need to set up that other ratio? I really don't because I now know what this side is across from the angle 30 degrees, so I can just double this. I can just multiply this by 2 to get the side that's, well, that's the hypotenuse. So this is 10 over the square root of 3, or 10 square roots of 3 over 3. So if you already know the side across the 30 degree angle, you just double that for the hypotenuse. Alright, let's do another example here. If RT has a length of 20, find the lengths of SR and ST. If you know the hypotenuse, it's pretty easy to go backwards without setting up your ratio. Here's your 60, here's your 30, here's your 90, and this is R, and this is S, and this is T. So if RT has a length of 20, then what is the length of RS? Well, RS is across from 30 degree angle, and that's always half of the hypotenuse, so that's 10. You know, from our ratio up here, oh, no, no, cancel, cancel, don't get rid of that. Okay, uh, from our ratio up here, the side across from the 30 is always half the hypotenuse, and the side across from the 60 is the side across from the 30 degree angle times square root of 3. So 
this other side will be 10 square roots of 3. So that's pretty easy. All right, let's do one last example. If ST has a length of 2 square roots of 5, draw my picture one last time. Here is my 60 and my 30. So this is S, R, and T. If ST is 2 square roots of 5, find the length of SR and RT. Now I'm going to use similar triangles here. And I'll put an X and a Y. So X over 1 equals 2 square roots of 5 over square root of 3. And that's just what that is. And that works out to be, if you simplify, by what well, it's not really simplification, I'm like calling that, if you rationalize the denominator, you get 2 square roots of 15 over 3. And so that is going to be for x. And then y is going to be double that, which is 4 square roots of 5 over the square root of 3, or 4 square roots of 15 over 3. Okay, well, I will see you guys tomorrow.